Um, I would like to know what you're feeling about the art market now. We, we are in a very special period. And uh, what, how do you imagine, how do you anticipate what will go in the art market as uh, Art Basel is opening in Miami? Well, this is irrespective of Art Basel in Miami, but uh, I think we're at a very interesting moment in the art market. Uh, for the last nearly 25 years, the scale and the depth and the breadth of the art market has just been on a huge growth uh, spurt. Uh, when I came into the art business in the 1980s, it was largely a connoisseur market. Uh, very few ultra high net worth collectors uh, were interested in art or collecting art, and it was mostly teachers, lawyers, doctors, uh, intellectual, intellectual, and well, as I say, connoisseurs, people who had an interest in studying the history and learning to discern between one work of art and another, uh, the characteristics, the qualities, the things that make one thing um, distinct from another. The growth of the market has largely been in people collecting art uh, for different reasons, you know, because of its uh, uh, the glamour, uh, the excitement, uh, the uh, belonging, belonging speculative to qualities. A circle. Yeah, um, I guess it was such an attractive uh, field uh, that many people have been drawn to it. The thing about uh, people collecting for those other reasons, uh, whatever they are, if they're financial, if they're artistic, uh, is that they tend to be more uh, followers of trends than uh, leaders of trends. And they're also the, uh, they're, they're quick to come into the market for new artists, uh, as we've seen you know, in the last 20 years, uh, the, the interest in artists of our time has been tremendous, uh, sometimes outstripping prices for uh, masters. Uh, but they're also the first ones to step to the sidelines uh, if there's a sense of unease uh, or uncertainty in the market. And high inflation, high interest rates, three or four uh, significant wars going on in the world, a pandemic, uh, these are all unsettling things. And I think they've caused a lot of people to step to the sidelines. Uh, and, and you can you can measure it already? Oh yes, yeah. Like in, what? Well, in 2023, uh, I think uh, we saw many uh, younger galleries, the kind that uh, are always hanging on to the edge uh, financially. And we saw many of those galleries close. Uh, or But what about your activity? Our activity is down. Um, you know, not enough to. Uh, to endanger our business, but it's measurably down, maybe as much as a third uh, from 2022. Uh, and so, uh, even more than that, what I can... What's your level the, now? The, the difference in sales numbers is not as important to me uh, as who I'm seeing in the galleries and who I'm seeing collecting and you know, who's still active. The people that are still active, They're the longer-term players, uh, the collectors who've been at it for a while. They've seen the market go up and down. Uh, they know that it's not a, a matter of following trends. It's a matter of finding the things that mean something to you, mm. uh, the works of art that you know that make a difference in your life, that challenge you, that uh, make you want to spend time with them every day. And you don't find those works necessarily when the market is good. You find them when you find them. I've often had people ask me, you know, where should I should I buy work at auction or should I buy from galleries? Uh, you know, it's a pretty simple answer. You buy the work where you find it. Uh, And so, how did you prepare the the fair, the, the Art Basel Miami fair, in this difficult situation? You know, we don't really respond to the market very much. Oh. And I think that's true for most of our colleagues. Certainly, the ones who can afford to uh, pursue their own passions uh, and the passions of the artists that they represent, you know, this is where we get our clues from. Uh, so, for instance, we're showing in our cabinet section works by Torquase Dyson, uh, who's the newest artist to join our gallery. She's been with us about three years. Um, 
you know, we chose to highlight some new works of hers because this, she's been very busy with biennials the last two years, and we really haven't had much new work from her. Uh, and this happened to be a moment when she was able to turn her attention to producing some work for the gallery. Uh, so we said, you know, this is what we want to focus on uh, in our booth. But that has nothing to do with the market, really. It just has to do with the passions of the artist and our commitment to further her career. And uh, you, you, you show, you usually show also some uh, more classic artists. Uh, true, and we have some artists like that too. Uh, like who? Now, now you're well, into and these are opportunistic. Uh, they come into the market when people decide to sell. Uh, we have a 1969 painting by uh, Robert Motherwell. Mm -hmm. Um, we have uh, a uh, similar period work by Richard Poussette Dart. Uh, we have a uh, Jean Arp sculpture. Wow. Um, these are all works from private collections that just happen to become available at this time. That's, you know, that market for 20th century masters is something that we've been in since the beginning of the gallery uh, over 60 years ago. And what do you see is the impact of the Israel uh, uh, Palestine situation? Art is a refuge from that, honestly. Uh, and that's one of the things that makes me happy to be involved in. But uh, we have read recently several articles about the fact that there would be a gap, a frontier now, between the pro and the anti. Israeli and Palestinian, what's your feeling about that? I mean, there's no question this is a deeply, deeply disturbing uh, time for people that care about, uh, well, they care about humanity, but in particular who care about uh, the, the, uh, about life in Israel and Palestine uh, and about Israelis and Palestinians. Uh, there's almost no one I know uh, who isn't upset about that and doesn't have strong feelings about it. But as I said, you know, I think what we do is a kind of a refuge from that in a way. I'm not saying that, you know, that we don't experience the tension, we do. Yeah, uh, but I, you don't sign any, any letter or... No. No, I have strong feelings, uh, but they're, they're nuanced, you know, they're not... One black side. or white? Uh, they're not one-sided, they're not black or white. Uh, I'm very involved in human rights things uh, outside of my business. I, I serve on the board of Human Rights Watch. And our work is, you know, it's, it's not political. Uh, and it's not um, focused on any one particular people. Uh, it's focused on the rights of all people. Uh, when we see war crimes, you know, Committed, uh, we report on those uh, so that people have access to information, they can make decisions. Um, and so, how do you imagine to come back to the market? How do you imagine the future in terms of prices, for example? I think there's a little downward pressure on prices right now. It's not the first time, and it won't be the last time. Uh, <laughs> but but for, for very contemporary or for modern? Both. And like 30% in one year? Well, that would be completely an arbitrary uh, number. No, yeah. I, I don't think so. I mean, in the time I've been involved in the art business, which is more than 40 years now, we've only seen really two times when there's been measurable decline in art prices. One was in the early 1990s, uh, after the, uh, the Japanese dropped out of the market. Um, and You know, there we had a decline of about that much, I would say, about 30%. And it took two or three years for the market to recover. The only other time I can really measure was 2008-2009, and that was a blip on the radar. You know, A few collectors came into the market to be sellers at prices as much as 20 or 30% lower than they had been because of the pressure of, uh, you know, because of financial pressure on them. They were mostly investors in Bernie Madoff and other funds like that. Mm. But that lasted six months, nine months, um, and things were back to normal after that. Merci, monsieur.